coming. I especially want to thank my friend Jessie, who's getting married in two days. Um, you are all at her bachelorette party. <laughs> 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 if anyone wants to flash her, right ahead. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I One of my great pleasures in life is going to new cities and wandering around in bookstores. And this is a really wonderful one, and so I'm so happy to be here in San Francisco. Um, I'm going to read two things. The first one is really depressing. But don't <laughs> worry, because the second one is going to bring you bring you right back up. I promise. You'll leave smiling. Um, so the first thing I'm going to read is uh, the shortest story in my collection. It's called Orient Point. I'm warning you now that it's depressing, so you won't get too down. It was August, and the, air's, the car's air conditioning was broken. That was part of the problem. John believed in waiting to see if appliances fixed themselves, if some benign magic from the greater universe would intervene. And so there we were, John in front and me in the back with the baby, all the windows down, sweat making the backs of our thighs stick to the seats. It would take three hours to get to his parents' house on the very tip of the North Fork of Long Island, and the open windows only helped when we were moving quickly, which wasn't often the case. John kept looking at us in the rear view mirror. No, not at us, at Eve. Is she okay, he asked. Eve was too small to face forward, and so he could only see the car seat itself in the rear view mirror. She was damp with sweat, just like us, her tiny brown wisps of hair plastered to her forehead. She's fine, I said, just hot. On cue, the baby whimpered. Eve was almost a year old and had mastered a few consistent words, all of which sounded like a drunk talking in his sleep. Sounds like she's hungry, John said. He narrowed his eyes at me. Is she hungry? She's fine, I said. Even thinking about breastfeeding made my body spring into action. I could feel the internal valves open. She would eat soon enough whether or not she was hungry. John had made sure of it. Otherwise, we'd arrive at his parents' house, John and Eve slick with sweat, me with sweat and tacky milk. The day after our wedding, my parents told me they loved John. They said it together at the kitchen table. I was already five months pregnant. He's a good man, my father said, a good man. We're very happy for you, my mother said. No one thought I would ever get married, not to somebody as clean as John, as fancy. That's what they were really saying that I'd waddled backwards into it like a scuba diver plopping off the back of a boat. And they were right. Eve had three cousins already on her father's side, slim, long children all. There were family outings to the beach, camping trips. They sang songs and did the puzzle. My parents didn't even close the door, didn't close the door when they used the bathroom, and as far as I knew, no one in John's family had ever even had to go. <laughs> Everyone always laughs at the bathroom jokes. <laughs> Eve looked like me, with dark features and a cloudy expression. She often cried when faced with cheery strangers at the grocery store, a trait I admired. She was an excellent screamer. In a few weeks, she would be a year old. I'd always hated it when parents counted in months, the same way that pregnant women counted in weeks, as though their time was too precious to use such large units of measure. John would have described Eve's age in days if he could count that high. It was like he thought she was the only baby who had ever been born. I know them, it's okay. I am too hot to breathe, I said. We were only 40 minutes out of the city, but the concrete landscape had already relaxed into long, uninterrupted stretches of trees. John didn't respond, instead just stared at the road in front of him. We zoomed by the huddled body of a dead deer on the median, and then another. John seemed not to notice. There was a beach an hour from Orient, one John's parents never went to because people were always nude. We passed the first sign for it on the road, and I smacked the back of John's seat. Turn here, I said, as though it had been our plan all along. Turn here, turn here, turn here. The thought of the water still cold in August made my mouth begin to salivate with relief. He did as he was told. Though he gamely pretended that his parents liked me, John was never in a rush to get me to their house as white and clean as a furniture showroom. The minute I stepped inside, I could feel the whole family collectively hold their breath. I was an accident. Eve was an accident. We were placeholders that forgot to move on. 
Our bathing suits were wadded in somewhere in the duffel bag in the trunk, but when we got out of the car and I'd unhooked Eve from her seat, the breeze from the ocean felt too good on my skin to wait another minute. Forget it, I said, just come on. The path from the small parking lot to the beach itself was a narrow strip of sand carved out of tall sea grass, waving pussy willows that reached my shoulders. The hot sand poured through the gaps of my flip-flops and stung my, stung my toes. Eve made a noise like a wet rag being wrung out, the kind of noise that was 90% saliva. John was a yard behind us, his empty hands already clutching at the anxiety of arriving at a beach in his clothes without a towel. Hold her for a sec, I said, and passed John the baby. I pulled off my tank top and shorts in less than a minute, peeling the damp cotton of my underwear off too, and dropped all my clothes into a pile on the sand. John stared at me as if I'd grown a third breast. Eve nestled into his chest like a barnacle. Okay, I said, I'm going in. And then I walked into the water, the icy Atlantic lapping at my ankles. One by one, I felt each of my blood vessels constrict until my body was half as big as it had been before. I walked until the water came up to my belly button and turned around. John and Eve hadn't moved. They stood static, father and daughter, rock and barnacle, as separate from me as the Atlantic from the Pacific. John and I weren't supposed to have gotten married. We weren't even supposed to have liked each other. We were supposed to have sex a few times, always high or drunk or both, and then to sheepishly forget each other's names. I would have. There had been possible exits before, choices he'd ignored, but it was still early enough to escape without permanent damage. But it wasn't the two of us that didn't fit, me and Eve. It was only me. John could take Eve and she would be one of them, as comfortable in that pristine White House as he was. She would never spill, never stumble. John would take her. Was it strange that I knew so clearly that, she, that he would be the one she clung to? She would see me on holidays, on weekends, and then hardly at all, until she only saw my young face in her baby pictures and recognized the scowl her father had taught her to discard. Everyone would be better off. John would be relieved. His parents would be quietly ecstatic and never say my name again. I smiled at him from the water before sinking to my knees and letting the cold water rise over my collarbones, over my ears, over my head. Okay, so that's a, that's a depressing story. <laughs> you all made it through. <laughs>